Hey everyone, my name's Chris and I just can't stop making things. Except for today, I'm stopping making my knight armor, which is almost done, because I got some stuff in the mail called Oyumaru. Oyumaru? Oyumaru. I don't know, but it's a mold making material that is flexible. I just saw some dust floating by. Which is a flexible, reusable mold making product, which apparently has been around for a long time, but I'd never heard of it. So I want to try it out and maybe you've never heard of it either and maybe it would be helpful for you too. So let's see if it's any good. If it is, super. All right, Oyumaru comes in these little packages of sticks that have no English writing on them. So I have no idea what they say, except there is a warning on the back. So be warned. My first impression is that they are rubbery and very strong rubber at that. I can bend the stick right back against itself and there's no splitting, which really surprised me. I thought it would fail at some point. In order to use Oyomaru, you need to make yourself a cup of tea in a fancy mug. Then pour the remaining hot water in an equally fancy container. Drop in your Oyomaru and give it a few minutes to soften while you happily drink your tea. If you're not happy, gaze at the pretty blue color of the stick, and you will be. Fish it out without burning your fingers and you can start squishing, which is fun, if you like squishing things, which I do. Of course, as the Oyomaru cools down, it goes back to its original rubbery form. Here you can see me trying to tear a thin sheet of it I made. And it's surprisingly strong. However, I did manage to tear it with my massive finger muscles. Now the great thing is my fooling around hasn't wasted anything. I can just throw those pieces back in the water and reuse them. Now, let's do something useful. Say you had a dugong brooch and you wanted to make a duplicate. You could grab a lid from a random bottle of paint to use as a mold frame, squish some Oyomaru into the lid, and push your dugong into the Oyomaru. Kinda looks like he's swimming in the ocean. Now patiently wait for it to cool, or impatiently put it in your freezer for a few minutes. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get it out of the lid once it was cool, but Oyomaru surprised me again, it came out great. Next I tried filling my mold with some FOMO foam clay. And the result was really quite good. Now I have a foam dugong. But is that really enough dugongs for one person? I didn't think so. So I thought I'd test if you could use an Oyomaru mold to make an Oyomaru dugong. I squished the clear Oyomaru into the mold, waited for it to cool, and was able to pull the two pieces apart. Which is really cool because it means this product will be good for making two-part molds as well. Clear rubber dugong. Nice. I also tried with another thermoplastic polycaprolactone, or PCL, and it worked too. One thing I did was cut air vents at the tips of the fins to prevent air from getting trapped and stopping a complete fill of the mold. At this point I decided to try a two-part mold and see how that works. Bye bye dugong mold. I grabbed a man in a business suit and stuck him in some warm soft plastic. He seemed really happy about the whole thing. I used the end of a broken stick to refine the edges where the Oyomaru was touching the businessman. This will become the parting line for the mold. I made some indentations to help the molds line up when I was done, and let the mold cool. Once cool, I gave it a light coating of water to help it not stick, and heated up some clear Oyomaru for the top half. Squished it down on top of him, and left the happy businessman to cool. Once cool, I pulled the two halves apart, which wasn't quite as easy as I expected, but still worked, and it sounded a bit like this. For this casting, I wanted to try some epoxy putty, but the only epoxy putty I had was just hardware store variety epoxy putty. Definitely not made for making molds, and therefore a little bit messy and hard to work with. I filled each half of the mold separately, and then squished them together. The problem with this type of casting is you have to be really accurate with how much material you put in each half. If you put too much, you'll have tons squeezing out the edges, and if you put too little, you won't have a complete fill. Turns out I put a little too much. I lined up the molds, and I squished as hard as I could. Once the epoxy had hardened, I pulled my businessman out of his mold, and spent some time cleaning him up. As you can see, the excess putty squished out the sides, and also made it hard to line up the halves properly. Which is why his body isn't quite perfect. But hey, that's business. So, Oyumaru, how good is that? 
pretty good. I love this stuff, actually. My uh, expectations have been overly exceeded. I did not expect this stuff to be this good or this tough, this strong. You can't break it. It's rubbery. It's fantastic. You can put two halves together and they don't stick together. Pull them apart, you got a two-part mold. Um, what else? You can get it in clear and you can see through to see your mold. That's really handy. Probably the only downside is you can't use something hot in it, like say, fill your mold with hot glue, because that would just melt the Oyomaru and it would probably just merge into a big mess. So there's that limitation. Other than that, it's a great material. In fact, I think you could use this Oyomaru for other stuff besides mold making, like say for rubber, I don't know, bumpers or stops. It's about the same sort of, what's the word for it? Is it durometer or elastometometer? Something like that. Kind of like a skateboard wheel, but like a soft skateboard wheel, if you know what I mean. So it's it feels really durable. I think you could use this for other things like something. I don't know what, but it's going in my brain for the next time I need a hard rubbery thing that needs to be molded to a certain shape. Boom, got it. So yeah, great stuff, glad I bought it. I'll definitely use it sometime when I need it. Also, if you like my videos, of course, you could click the subscribe button, but maybe even better would be to subscribe to my newsletter. I'll put a link in the description because, because sometimes YouTube doesn't notify everyone when I release a new video, whereas I always send out a newsletter whenever I release a new video or a new product. That way you won't miss it. Also, that's the only newsletters I release, so you won't be getting a bunch of annoying spam Spammy spam spam. Just the important good stuff. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya. <laughs> okay. <laughs>